In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. In today's parable that Jesus spoke before the Jewish authorities, he is definitely, um, in an uncoded way, condemning them. And by the middle of it, they would have realized very clearly who he was talking about. You see, the, the imagery of a vineyard is from Isaiah. This is actually almost the story. The parable itself is almost a direct quote from Isaiah. I believe Isaiah 5. It talks about the hedge, the vineyard, the press, the tower. And this is an image of, of Israel, of the people of God, of this special vine that's been planted by God and is meant to be tended to. And the fruit that it was meant to produce was righteousness. It was, it was meant to, through the following of the commandments, hearts were meant to be converted ultimately. And the people of God, keeping their side of the covenant, were meant to commune with their God. And the fruit was ultimately again righteousness, peace, and the kingdom functioning as God had created it to. But it wasn't functioning well. And so the God sent prophets and they stoned and killed the prophets. He sent other prophets and they did likewise the same. And then Jesus' parable is going to go on to talk about how the Father sends the Son. Now, this is an image that is easy and interpretively to focus on that Old Testament, uh, the Old Testament failures of the Jews stoning the prophets or eventually even as um, the Pontius Pilate and, and the Jews eventually crucify our Lord that his prophecy that's given in this parable is ultimately fulfilled. But we're meant to reflect on scriptures at a, at a different level because now we're the vineyard. We are the vine. And so there has also been a hedge placed around us and we have been tasked with cultivating the vineyard. Not only the authorities such as the priests and bishops, but the very people of God are not only the vines, but they are also the ten tenders of the vineyard. And there are two levels to think of this. One is, is the, the vineyard corporately. In other words, that each one of us individually, personally, has a responsibility for cultivating fruit that ultimately is fruit that this local church community produces. That this in and of itself, this church itself, is a vineyard. And that there's a community of buy-in and that we're all in some way responsible to tend, to cultivate, so that the church may produce fruit. The particular fruit of our mission speaks of the fruit of community, the fruit of evangelism, going out and spreading the gospel, the fruit of changed lives, people transforming themselves here and finding Christ here. And that is all of our responsibility. Secondarily, we know that the earthly temple or the church, this, even this church, is scaled down to be a personal thing. That God only, doesn't only meet us here in the church, but he also meets us in the temple of our hearts. And so we have a personal responsibility to cultivate our hearts, to go cultivate the presence of God within our lives so that we personally bear fruit. In John 15, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you are apart from Christ, you wither. But it is only attached to Christ, growing closer to him that you have life in your branches. And ultimately, this is meant to produce fruit. And the fruit, as Paul says, of the Holy Spirit is love and uh, generosity, kindness, and all those things that no evil can be spoken against. It is commitment. It is the ability to follow Christ, to take up our cross, 
And ultimately, part of our fruit is even as it says in early in the New Testament is to bear the fruits of repentance. To realize that sometimes we don't add up and to even just show forth the repentance. So as a community, and individually or personally, we each have a calling, a high calling. We could look at today's parable and we could reinterpret it. You see, we didn't stone the prophets. We didn't kill the son. But when we think about the vine dresser coming and looking for fruit at the vineyard, we can look at this in a different way, as a bid for connection. That's a psychological term. It's a bid for connection. God is coming to us, asking us, what is it you've been doing? I've given you stewardship over what I have given you. I have given it to you, and what are you doing with it? Have you used it? Have you cultivated it? And in this connection, we have to assess ourselves within it. Are we doing anything? Are we stewards of the gifts that God has given us? Whether the gift be externally this community, this church, because there is a certain stewardship that takes place in this church that is not only financial, but is also the stewardship of participation, the stewardship of being a part of the vision and spreading its vision and, and making sure that it is the community that we want it to be, a community that bears fruit. But then also in that bid for connection, it's to see if we have our personal fruit. Do we know what our gift in Christ is? And do we know what it is that we are called to be doing in the body of Christ, whether it be in this church or outside of this church in the world? And if we know deep down, what are we doing? And furthermore, what are we doing with our families? Are we raising them Christian? What are we doing with our jobs? Are we working as a Christian should work? In this bid, this, this idea that connected to Christ the vine grows and bears fruit is automatic. You see, the amazing thing is that although we're called to work and we're called to ultimately know our gifts and to utilize them, that without doing that, we not only don't feel fulfilled, but if we st simply are willing, God will use us. And not only use us, but we'll obtain fulfillment and the growth becomes automatic. At the end of the age, our Lord will come to judge the living and the dead. We hear in the Gospel, Matthew 25, some charitable works that those disciples had done, like feeding the poor, giving drink to those who are thirsty, clothing the naked, visiting those in prison. We hear in other parts of the New Testament about faith, about how Christians will be known by their love for one another, and about how Christians will bear the fruit of the Spirit. These are the things that we will present to give account for our lives when Christ comes to judge the living and the dead. May we not be found to be a fruitless vi vineyard, not only as a community, but also personally. May we ask our Lord to reveal to us what it is that we're called to do, how it is we're called to work, so that ultimately He can grow us and that we can honor Him and that we wouldn't kill the prophets sent to us, but ultimately in the accepting of the Son, we would share in the inheritance, much like a vine dresser would share in the joy of a great harvest. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst.